Hey guys, so this is going to be my, let's see, I'm trying to, crap, what was my other bump date? I don't know, week 9 and 10, I think? 9, 10, 11 though, because, um, I don't know, it'll be in the title, but 9, 10, 11 though, because I actually um, was thinking I was 10 weeks, but then the baby measured 11 weeks. That was last week, so I'm probably 12 weeks now. This is so effed up, but <laughs> I'm going to be talking about last week and back. So this week will be in other bump date for like 12, 13, if that makes sense. But um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what week I'm in. I was a little confused by that because they didn't change my due date. But I was like, no, 11 weeks makes much more sense than any of the other dates have with like how my cycles are, if that makes sense, and my typical ovulation date. So I don't really know what's going on with that. I have a feeling 11 weeks last week was correct. So we just jumped ahead a week. <laughs> and I never got my my uh, 10, was it 10 week picture? Cause I was doing like those, you know, little chalkboard pictures every two weeks. But then I was like, you know what? Like I haven't grown that much or changed. So I, it's kind of silly to be like taking the same picture. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Should I keep doing every two weeks? Because I'm just, it's going to go from four weeks, eight weeks to 12 weeks because I did not take a 10 week one. So that's a thing. This video might be a little long because I did go to OB. I'm going to talk about some of that stuff. Some of you guys have asked me questions. I'm going to address them. Um, and if my dogs are in the room, I'm praying to God that they just stay there and lay down and don't cause a ruckus because um, Ralph is being really sneaky today and I feel like if I shut him out of the room, he's going to go get into something he shouldn't. So that's that. So week 9 and 10 have kind of been about the same. Um, there's a few things I noticed. The other day I was at my friend Crystal's house, pregnant Crystal, like do soon Crystal. And well, she's due in January, but I really think the baby's gonna come in December. But we walked up her stairs to go to the baby's nursery, and we got to the top of the stairs. And I'm, it made me feel better because, like, when I climb the stairs in my house now, like I just did to come up to my office to film, I'm like, <sighs> <sighs> and I told her she was all breath, and she's like, "Yeah, we're definitely pregnant." I was like, "Yeah, but you're like, you got a big baby in there. I feel silly." being like my baby's like what the size of a lime or a lemon or something and I'm all like <sighs> but she says she was like that too <clears throat> at like when she was around how pregnant I am so I don't know I guess it's just a pregnancy thing but I get out of breath faster um, <clears throat> week nine when my medicine was working really well um, for the hyperesis I wasn't throwing up I still have nausea, but it's not like to the point where I'm throwing up all the time, which is so doable. Like, you know, the baby's not unhealthy. I'm able to, it's not nauseous to the point where I can't drink anything. So it's been, it's been okay. It's been fine. Um, that has not been an issue at all. Um, but I didn't really feel anything week nine. No um, cramps or anything. Last week was week 11 or uh, week 11 or 10. We don't know. <laughs> and I really didn't really feel much until the end of it and I started having, <clears throat> I would say, I don't know, like they're not like period cramps, just <sighs> achy, I don't know how to explain it, just different. It just feels like, I don't know if it's round ligament pain or whatever, but there's definitely like some weird feeling down there, whereas it's like the other two, two weeks after the, you know, like implantation kind of cramping stopped, it was just like don't really feel much um I will say something that I'm trying to like go over everything I wrote down um I have been sleeping so much still um I kept hoping as I got closer to the end of the first trimester I would get a lot of energy back and I haven't I'm just getting more sleepy so if you guys see that I haven't answered comments in three days eventually I will get to them but the problem is I get on my computer and I sit down on the couch or whatever because to be honest, my office is clean but my desk is full of stuff I need to organize and put away. Um, and stuff for the Dollar Tree haul I've been collecting which isn't a huge haul but I don't know how it turned into such a mess. Somebody would like sit at my desk. 
So usually I take my laptop to the couch or the bed and I start answering comments and then I fall asleep. So you might see like I answered comments on a newer video but I hadn't on an older video. I try to get to all of them, um, especially the ones that directly ask a question or not just a comment. But you guys, I have been la like slacking bad just because every time I start to do it, I get sleepy and I fall asleep. I'm just sleeping all the time. It's ridiculous and I feel, I feel bad because like I'm, I have been like cleaning the house, but I don't know. I still feel bad about it for some reason. I guess because like mostly it's like I'm keeping the house clean and stuff, but cooking is not happening that often. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. Somebody asked if I could like film um, Capricorn 78. Um, asked if I could film some of my like dinners and stuff and to be honest I haven't been cooking <laughs> like not that often um, I do make healthy choices from wherever we eat you know and I do take my, my protein shakes and stuff and I mean I might like I I look like weird I eat a lot of I and mean, it's weird to most people um, like when they say they snack and stuff they're snacking on I don't know chips or something and me snacking all day is like eating a big steamer bag of broccoli and Brussels sprouts and then eating some asparagus. <laughs> like, I don't know. But I cooking wise, I have not been cooking to be honest. There's been a few nights I've got energy together and I've made dinner. But for now, like I've rearranged the grocery budget so that we're like, we're mostly eating out. And luckily the grocery budget, I had enough from where I had saved money for it to be okay for now and I'm hoping my energy comes back because I'm tired of eating out. I'm making the healthiest choices possible when we do eat out, but it's like, I'm tired of eating out. <laughs> it's just like, everything sounds horrible to me in general, like food wise, um, but yeah, I have no energy to cook. It's like either the house is gonna be a mess or I cook and with like my, like, and I'm not saying this like, oh, I'm very OCD. No, legitimately I have obsessive compulsive order. I was diagnosed at 16. Um, I literally choose keeping the house clean for my sanity over cooking. So yeah, that's just that on my energy. Um, throwing up kind of started again last week and into this week, this weekend and into this week. I think I'm gonna have to up my hypermesis medicine. I'm taking like less than the amount I can take. I'm taking like the lowest dose. So it's not a huge thing, but I do not like taking medicines. I hate the fact that I have to, but I have to. Um, that being said, on the topic of medications, several people have asked me why I'm high risk in my pregnancy. Um, I'm high risk because I have high blood pressure. Um, and high blood pressure, whether I'm skinny or fat like I am now. I'm, some people hate the term fat, but I'm be real, I'm overweight. It is what it is. Um, so no matter my size, I have uh, high blood pressure. My mom had high blood pressure. My Nana, who is like, she's like 95 almost. She has high blood pressure her whole life and she's always been very thin, very healthy. It's just bad family genes. So <clears throat> having high blood pressure, puts me at a higher risk for um, preeclampsia and all that stuff. So uh, I am high, I'm not like, oh my God, I could have a heart attack. My blood pressure is totally controlled. It hasn't like spiked or done anything crazy, but because that is a condition I have, that's why I am high risk. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. On the high risk topic, <laughs> some people have asked why I had to have genetic testing. My doctor strongly pushed for, and honestly, could I have been like, no, for religious reasons I don't want genetic testing or because I don't feel like it or because I can't afford it. I mean, yes, I'm sure they couldn't have forced me to get it, but the reasons she had made a lot of sense to me. The fact that I am high risk, any little thing they can learn about tater tot can help prepare us for the safest and healthy as pregnancy and delivery. So if the baby had like cystic fibrosis or Downs or something like, or something else wrong genetically, or I don't know, they did a whole bunch of other tests, it would be best to know that. Did my air just kick on? Oh, I hate when that happens when I'm filming. It always like affects the sound. Sorry, but um, 
whether it be you know the smallest thing the like every little thing we know about the baby can help us prepare for like the safe pregnancy safe delivery because I'm high risk I hope that makes sense um, some weird things going on with my body I wanted to talk about was my hair um, so I don't know if you guys can see back here my hair is starting to get like wavy. I've always kind of had like weird wavy hair occasionally, but it's starting to like curl in the back in some places. And usually only my baby hairs will curl once in a while. When I was little, I had really curly hair and it grew out and my mom didn't want to cut off my curls, so I had curly hair on the end. And then after they cut it, it was like super straight, but it's like my hair is starting to curl on the ends. It's weird. I don't know if that's a pregnancy thing, but that's happening. So another thing we talked about in my OB appointment, which I actually was really happy. I really just love this doctor. She's so educated on fibromyalgia, which like some doctors are like fibro my what? Like it's just, it's crazy. So she's extremely educated on it and pregnancy and like the different things that can happen to me in pregnancy. And she said that we will take care of it no matter like what um, we'll find a way to keep me comfortable that is safe for me and the baby etc etc so I love that about her another thing I love about her was <sighs> I've been to some OBs and maybe I hadn't been pregnant at those appointments but I felt very rushed through or whatever and with her she like was we were in there for an hour she let me talk she listened to my concerns one of my big concerns honestly was my weight, it came to a point with the fertility treatments. Um, before I went into the fertility treatments, for those of you that are new subscribers, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was at a good, I felt like healthy, um, I like before I went off birth control, okay? I was able to somehow, I guess my hormones were okay, I was able to maintain a weight that I was pretty happy with and lose a bunch of weight um, before we decided to start trying for a baby. So then I came off birth control and I kept on my diet. I kept on my, you know, I go in and out of life being overweight, I'll be honest. Um, but I really worked my butt off to lose weight before we start trying so that I would be healthy. So I went off birth control, but I kept trying to lose weight. I was staying on my diet and stuff and I started gaining and gaining and gaining and I was like, what the hell? And doctors would not listen to me. And finally I did find a doctor that did listen to me and he gave me metformin and helped me get my, um, you know, hormones under control, which enabled me to start losing weight again. But I gained almost a hundred pounds, okay, after him off birth control. It was so scary. So then I met the, my old OB, which the only reason he's not my, gonna be my baby doctor is because it's too far away to go to that hospital. So he started me on metformin, even though I'm not like diabetic or pre-diabetic or have insulin issues like other women with PCOS. And it was able to kind of get my hormones in check so that my efforts in losing weight actually like, I don't lose weight I think as fast as most people, but I was able to finally start losing weight. So out of the 100 I put on, actually, yeah, it was at least 100, maybe a little more. I was able to lose about 55, 60 pounds. Um, and then I was like, okay, so maybe now I'll get pregnant. <laughs> Nothing, all right? So then I was finally like, well, they say lose weight, you know, your cycles will return, blah, 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 you'll get pregnant, which my cycles returned with metformin. But I was like, you know what? It obviously did nothing let's go into this whole like let's start Clomid let's do all this stuff and thus began that journey okay well I came to a point where we have spent so much money I told Justin I was like let's save for our next IUI which was gonna be injectable ones and extremely expensive I was like let's save and if we pass the amount of money we need then maybe we'll start saving for another one as a backup but I really want to take the next year to focus on our health, to lose weight. I don't want to be unhealthy and pregnant. And I didn't go on birth control or anything like that, or anything like that because birth control totally threw off my hormones. And I was like, I'm not gonna get pregnant on my own. And then I got pregnant on my own about four months in. So, crazy. 
Um, so my big thing with her was I told her I realized it wouldn't be healthy to have a baby at my size. And so when I actually got pregnant, you know, and it just happened like it did, I was like, oh crap, and I started worrying about things like, is this gonna mess with my blood pressure, you know? Stuff like that. So I was like, so I am very concerned about my weight. And I want you to know I'm not one of those people that is naive to the fact that my pregnancy will be more dangerous. Like, you know, I might have, I might get pre-diabetes because I'm overweight, not pre-diabetes. I might, you know, I'm more prone to gestational diabetes because PCOS, but because I'm overweight as well. I'm like, I just want you to know I'm not naive to that. And I want to do whatever it is you tell me I need to do. And she told me that, um, <clears throat> I think she was surprised by that a little because I think most people get really insecure about their weight when they talk to a doctor um, and I'm, I've never been like that so um, she said we we'll just need to make sure you only gain about 15 pounds and I told my friend Crystal that at lunch the other day she was like how are you only gonna gain 15 pounds I was like well when you're overweight it's just it's the way it is you know so that's my goal not to gain more than 15 pounds I actually lost a little weight because of hypermesis so next appointment I need to be like 15 pounds pre-pregnancy like not pre-hypermesis because ever since my medicines got my stuff in control I put a little bit back on of what I lost um, and it's not that I'm eating super I don't know why it just started coming back like maybe it was a lot of water weight I don't know but um, so I told her that I need to tell her that because now I'm like my weight right now or like my pre-pregnancy weight I don't know so another thing that happened this weekend when I was seeing my family at my uh, cousin's daughter's birthday party was everyone decided they wanted to say like like go around and be like okay what do you think the baby is which I was gonna ask everyone at the gender reveal and I'll talk about the gender reveal in a second but yeah my family started going around and be like what do you think it is what do you think it is and uh, most people think it's a girl my grandma who is spot on with like all her children, all her grandbabies, all her great grandbabies. I'm sure she's had a few in there she, you know, didn't get right, but you know, she's got a pretty good, I don't know, radar for what the baby's gonna be. So she said, I really want it to be a boy, but I really think it's a girl. So I always like, <laughs> I've always waited till I got pregnant because like my grandma is such a good, I don't know, she always just guesses it right. But I thought it was funny because I had never heard her say, I want it to be this, but I think it's that. So grandma's prediction is a girl. Um, the gender reveal party. So my dad got that taken care of. He's going to have it at his house. They're going to get food and drinks and stuff. It's not going to be very big. It's just going to be my immediate family, Justin's immediate family. Um, I invited a couple of friends. So far, two of them can't come, but I think... Both my crystals are gonna be able to make it. <laughs> um, and then I invited my cousin because she's like like my friend too, um, and my aunt uh, and my grandma will be there. But then other Justin's grandma lives like farther out and I don't think she's gonna make it. But um, yeah, so that's gonna be the gender reveal party. We were gonna do a cake, okay? But here's the thing, I used to make cakes and sell them wedding cakes 3D kids cakes. I've talked about this before. I used to work as a pastry chef for a um, catering company in Houston. I also used to work for one of the top cake companies in Houston, like wedding cake places. So I know how expensive and I know why cakes are so expensive. Like I understand because I've made them. I know what goes into them. People just don't understand why they're so expensive in general. So I was prepared for the price, you know. <laughs> So I went on, I've been wanting to make it at this place called Three Brothers Bakery. Um, so I went on to their site and I couldn't get prices for like um, custom cakes or whatever, which when I did cakes, I always had all the prices on my site. Um, unless it was like a custom 3D kind of cake. Uh, I always had the price for like the size of the cakes, base price, and then like what it would be to add stuff, if that makes sense. So I couldn't find that on there. So I typed in their little search bar, gender reveal cake. And they have a like twinkle twinkle little star I wonder who you are cake that they use for baby showers and I guess gender reveals it's just like a round cake it wasn't even that big um, and then they have like some fondant artwork that was like 3d on top of it but the price of that one cake 
was 180. And as somebody who, okay, fondant is expensive. Yes, okay, but not $180 expensive for that size cake. So that made me almost have a freaking heart attack because I do not want my dad to have to buy the cake. So now I'm thinking we might do the thing where we make a box and then take it to Party City and they put the color balloons in there and we open them. I haven't run this past Justin, but I just saw the cake online and I was like, oh my God, no. But that's like the closest bakery to my dad's. And I'm like, we could just get like a cake cake for when we have dessert and open the box. So I might be changing that. But the gender reveal will be the day after Thanksgiving. You guys will see or know what it is. I don't know, I might put it out that night if I have time to edit it. Just like the, okay, woo, here it is, this is gender. And then the next day put out the gender reveal vlog where you see like all the behind the scenes stuff. Or you just, guys just might wait to the next day and it might just be vlog style. Um, I'm not, I don't mean this offensively, but I'm not looking for opinions on that. I um, am gonna do whatever, I'm I can do like I, like that it's it's gonna be a lot of energy for me to like do the gender reveal like go there and be there all day so I cannot promise you guys that I'm gonna sit down and edit my daily vlog um, and a whole separate video for that in one night and get it up at a reasonable hour that evening so you know what I'm probably just y'all probably just see it the next day as I'm sitting here talking sense into myself you guys will see it the next day so However, I will show you guys the behind the scenes of how we're gonna tell our people on our personal social media, like family and stuff that aren't there. It'll involve the dog, so I will vlog that photo shoot of how we're gonna do it. We're gonna have to do one for a boy and one for a girl, and then right after whatever it is we end up doing, the cake or the balloons, I'll post it on social media as our announcement. I don't know if I covered everything. I'm just like, I'm already tired. I have to do a Dollar Tree haul still. Um, another thing is, I've been going to Old Navy for clothes and their plus size stuff. Usually I'm just extra large, but I've been buying extra, extra large and everything has been like, it's been okay, it's a little loose, but I feel like I have room to grow in it for the next nine months or whatever. Well, less than nine months, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the two dresses I bought the other day. So I'm wearing one of them. And I'm going to show you guys this one. This one I got an extra, extra large because the extra large, I felt like I couldn't grow any in it. It is like this little like peasant kind of dress. I'm going to wear it for the gender reveal. Actually, I like, I'm going to insert a little video of what it looks like with the boots on I'm going to wear now. Okay, my gender reveal outfit, I think. I think. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> and I'm gonna take it to Vegas for Brooks and Dunn. So I'm gonna wear that for the gender reveal, I think. And um, I'm also gonna wear it in Las Vegas when we see Brooks and Dunn. And then this is the other dress I got. And I figured if my stomach gets really big and pulls the dress up, then it um, I can just get, um, I can put leggings on with it. So I'm also going to take this dress to Vegas to wear during the day because it's like long sleeve and stuff and it's going to be cold. So this is the other dress I got. Um, it comes down to like my knee. Oh, I can't stand on my tippy toes enough, but I think I can wear leggings with it too when we go to Vegas for when it's really cold. And I will give you guys a bump shot. It actually is a little small right now because I haven't eaten that much. I noticed in the morning I'm smaller than at the night. I don't know if that's a thing or it's normal. So yeah, this dress has an insane amount of room to grow. And I actually was like, oh, I'll pull the extra, extra large on this one. But this one is an extra large and it's still like, like tons of room for a pregnancy belly. The other dress is the same way, but like maybe at like 35 weeks, I'm gonna have to stop wearing it if it's too tight. Anyways, so yeah, that is the two dresses I got. They were not on sale, that sucked. They were they were about, I mean like 30, $35 each, which I looked at the maternity motherhood place and I've also looked at pink blush and stuff like that online. I haven't ordered anything yet just because once I found Old Navy, like I found so many maternity clothes like on clearance there and I know my size really well in it now. So like I might order some stuff on pink blush maternity but I'm trying not to buy that many clothes. I'm trying to buy, buy, buy trying to buy stuff that I can just grow with. So you guys might see me in the same outfits over and over again for the next nine months because I'm cheap. So yeah, and also these dresses I feel like I could wear 
after I have the baby. They might just be a little bigger, but I thought they would be, you know, they, they can, I can wear them when I'm not pregnant. So lastly, I want to talk about something that people will probably either feel one way about or another way about, and that is feeling the baby move. I have always kind of been on the side of where, well, something that small, can you really feel it move? And so it started like last week at the end of the week, so close to 12 weeks. Um, I, the first time it happened, I was laying in bed and I felt like, I was like, what the hell was that? It wasn't gas, okay? It wasn't anything else I've ever felt before. I don't know how to describe it. I've heard people say butterflies, but it wasn't really like a butterfly feeling. It was kind of like, this is gonna be the best way I can describe it, so forgive me. A very small, like, I mean like, and it was in a very small area, like a pulsing, it wasn't a cramp. I don't know how to explain it. like a pulsing, tickling sensation almost. Um, or like a pulsing small muscle spasm. I don't know if that makes any sense. But it was in a very like low down in my abdomen area. It felt like it was inside me. <laughs> I just don't know how else to describe this. And it was like a very tiny area. And so I'm like, I've never had gas in a very tiny area. And I just like, I really truly felt like that was the baby moving. Like, and I know people are like, you don't feel that till later unless it's your second pregnancy. But let's think about this. The reason women feel it sooner in their second pregnancy, I don't think is physical. I think it's because they already know what it feels like. Unless there's some strange physical reason you can suddenly feel it in your second pregnancy and not in your first. I honestly think it's because you know what it feels like. And I don't know, but honestly, Closer, I was closer to 12 weeks than I was 11 by size of baby. I honestly think I felt the baby move. I think I did. People can say I'm crazy, whatever, that's fine, but I honestly think that's what it was. And it happened when I was listening to music. And I don't think the baby can like, I think it can only feel things, like vibrations, because like the doctor was hitting, not hitting, like beating my stomach, but she was like tapping my stomach to wake the baby up for acoustics, she said, not like shaking the baby. So I think I had my laptop, not on my stomach, but kind of like I sleep when I'm like doing work on it and I'm laying in bed. It was kind of up here towards my boobs and I was listening to music. And it the creep, that's not creepy, but like the weird thing is it's a specific song. It is a song that makes me really emotional and it, it kind of makes me wonder if it's like the emotion I feel every time I'm hearing it causing the baby to move or what because the first time I felt it I was like oh my god I told Justin I woke him up I was like I think I felt the baby move and then the last time I felt it was the night before last so not last night while I was sleeping but the one before that um I was listening because I just have like a playlist I listen to I was listening to the same song and I will link one of the YouTube videos of it below um, it's not like a music video, but it's the Garth Brooks song called Mom. And it came out when I was trying to conceive and me and my friend Tandy, she is um, one of my infertility friends has become like one of my best friends. Um, <laughs> she and I, it always made us cry because it, it almost feels like it was written about somebody who was waiting, who had infertility, about to cry. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, it always struck a chord with us for that reason. It really made me emotional as well because I don't have my mom anymore, like she's passed away. So it, it's like a dual <laughs> emotion song for me. And every time it comes on my playlist, I get the same emotion, like happy but sad. And I start crying. And so anyways, it was on the first time I heard the baby move. So that's why I think this might be tied to emotion, not sound. Um, <laughs> I don't think the baby can like a song when it's this little. I don't know, maybe. But then the next time it came on, the night before last, I had the same feeling again. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so I'm just like, I think like maybe it makes the baby move when I have, like get real emotional. I don't know. 
that's it. That's that's it for my bump date. I feel like this is gonna be a really long one, and I'm sorry. I just wanted to get all this information out there because, um, you know, day to day, I don't talk about it that much, as I don't want to feel like I'm just. That's all I talk about anymore. For those of you that there, those of you or those are the ones that, because I know there's probably some subscribers that, like I love Ellie and Jared, um, Daily Bumps. I go back and forth between watching them, you know, give or take. I could, t I like them, but I don't like them as much as Ellie and Jared, Katie and Colin. Anyways, but when people were pregnant and I was dealing with infertility, I did not watch the bump dates because it was too hard. Like. And, and I didn't like when every vlog became about their pregnancy. You know, everyone's excited about a baby, you know, and stuff, but I don't want every single vlog to be about that. So that's why I try to save these things for the bump dates. Anyway, that's my bump date. I will see you guys for week 12 and 13. My next OB appointment is not this week, but next week. And that's the same week we find out the gender. So I'm so excited to find out so we can start buying stuff for the baby. Um, trying not to go crazy, but yeah, it'll just be nice to be able to, if I see something really cute that I want, be like, well, if it's dress, I can get it. Or if it's a boy thing, I can get it. So yeah, I will see you guys later.